Good afternoon. Today I'll be discussing Margaret Mee and her painting, The Moonflower Portrait, painted in 1988. Margaret Mee was an important and influential botanical artist whose work has had a big impact on both the worlds of art and science. She was born on 22nd of May 1909 in England. It was here she studied art, although it wasn't until she started painting in Brazil that her work gained some recognition. After hearing her sister was ill in 1952, Mi travelled to Sao Paulo to take care of her sister. It was then she fell in love with the country. Even after her sister died in 1956, Mi decided to stay in Brazil and document the plant life. From there on, she went on 15 expeditions into the Amazon rainforest to hunt for rare and wild plants. One such of these plants was the moonflower cactus. The moonflower cactus is a beautiful plant with red leaves and white blossoms. Not that many get to see these blossoms, as one of the most intriguing facts about the moonflower cactus is it always blooms, it only blooms one night a year and almost always at night. When Mia heard about this, she became obsessed with painting it, especially after seeing it on other occasions. Before painting it, in 1988, she spotted it twice on other expeditions, the first time only catching a glimpse of it, the second managing to collect samples, but neither time did she see it in bloom. This desire to see its flowering process drove her to embark on her 15th and final expedition into the Amazon rainforest. Her expedition was successful and finally she managed to paint it. However, before painting it in bloom, she did several investigative drawings and pencil sketches during the day. This allowed her to capture her final painting with greater accuracy, as she got to explore its shapes and patterns beforehand. The samples she took in previous years would have also helped with this. This accuracy was one of the things that made her work so valued as it was better for scientists to study. Me also completed a picture of it during the day in order for a comparison to be done while studying the paintings. Another thing important about her work was painting from real life subjects. Me always drew from real life as much as possible thinking that even plants cultivated by humans were much different from those grown in their natural habitat. This effort doesn't go unnoticed. Her shapes and lines seem more natural and the plant looks more alive than most cultivated plants do. Me through this method can also hint at the strangling flora, giving the viewer an idea of the climate and area in which the plant lives in. Once the viewer also hears about the discomfort she had to go through in order to paint this, painting it on top of a boat by a torch and moonlight, they can also appreciate how important it is. This is only emphasised by the fact she decided to turn off her torch after seeing it was affecting the flowering process. Colour also plays a big part in this piece, and we can tell this just from the media alone. Gouache paint is used to paint this, which is a paint very similar to watercolour with one key difference. It has stronger pigments. It's even painted on Raphael paper, which is especially suited to gouache paint. This creates a very vibrant piece which catches the viewer's eye. A bright pearly white is only used on the moon and the flower heads. Through this, the viewer can see the connection between the two. This connection to the moon, especially if the viewer doesn't know anything about the cactus, can also make it seem quite mystical, the moon having long-standing connotations towards the magical and mysterious. The cactus seems almost ethereal as it lights up the darkness, causing the viewer to wonder about it even after looking away. Contrasting colours are also used between the background and the main subject. 
The dark green background contrasts with the bright red leaves in order to make sure the main focus is always on the moonflower, despite having a background. In her early works, she didn't use to include backgrounds, forcing the viewer to only focus on the plant. However, in her later works, such as this, she began to include some of the surrounding environment. This came around due to the rise in deforestation in Brazil during the 1970s. Me was someone deeply invested in this issue, even giving speeches on it, and started to try and convey the severity of this problem through her work. By including a background, she shows the plant's dependency on its natural habitat. Although, as we can see, she still makes sure to keep the focus on the moonflower by its central composition, bright colouring and contrasting colours. The background is also fairly generic, not only keeping the focus on the moonflower, but conveying that this could be anywhere, meaning no matter where you decide to cut down trees, this enchanting plant could be destroyed. Overall, the moonflower portrait has had a big impact on the world. Although one of her last paintings, me dying tragically later that year in a car accident, it is still used as a reference as how the blooming moonflower looks today and is currently on display in Kew Gardens. Her method we can also take inspiration from as her commitment to painting plants in their homes and the accuracy in which she does this is inspiring. We can only hope that by painting the moonflower and showing its beauty, she has had an impact on deforestation, even though it is still a big problem today. However, we can take hope in the fact that the moonflower is still alive today, unlike several of the other plants she studied. Thank you for listening. Any questions?